Welcome to this new video. This video is all about data load from options and settings in Power BI. So if you didn't understand what are the options and settings, you can go to file. When you select file, you will see this options and settings here. And here you can select this options and just enter here. And you will be getting this window called options and you can go down and it is for the current file of course there are two apps mainly one is global and one is current file now we are going to deal with current file and in that current file we are going to deal with data load. all these options what are all these options we are going to see in this video so the first one in that options is type detection so what type detection does is it detect column types and headers for unstructured sources so if you are selecting that from unstructured sources that means okay if you are getting data from an excel sheet or a csv there you don't have a data type mentioned but whereas in sql or azure if you are getting data or any other database if you are getting data you will be having a database or data type in that database for numbers you will be having int for decimal numbers you will be having float or for text you will be having text values also or string values as data types but if there is no data type which is mentioned in the data source this will automatically detect and it will give a data type it might be right or it might be wrong so suppose if you are unselecting this if you don't want the data type to be set then your screen will be looking like this you won't have two steps here that is provided headers and data type option here instead of that until here it will come and it will start the many things you need to do with your own self like you have to make this first row as the heading and you have to change each one of them into data type uh, respective data type like whatever is numbers you have to change the column with respect to that and whatever is text you have need to change it with respect to that all the data type will be shown as abc and one to two three or abc but at the same time if you are using if you're selecting this this is the usual way you will get most of the people will be getting like this only so when you select this and if you get data from an excel sheet it will be like normal till these steps the power bi will be doing it automatically it will check the data and it will automatically detect that actually customer in the card detected it saw the values in this current column and it understood that okay it is number and it has changed the data type the number the same way the next data type also it got detected as text and it had given the data type as text so this happens if you are selecting this this will be default select so we don't need to do it but if you want don't want power bi to dictate it you can unselect the next one will be relationship so relationships is it imports so relationship from the data source on first law so there are data sources which will be already having relationship for example the the relationship will be like two tables will be related with primary key or for one table and the foreign key with another table here in this example we are having two tables student and course and this course is having primary key and the same key you can find it in the student table also and that is mentioned as foreign key actually this student and course table will be related using this course ID. So with respect to this course ID, you can understand, okay, which student is taking which course. So that is going to join these two tables. So this relationship will be already done in some databases like SQL Server. So for example, if you are taking this SQL Server, this is not in database. And in this database itself, okay, it is having primary and foreign key and it has related these three tables with us so if you are taking these three tables into the power bi and if this option is set so this same relationship will be taken as like that when you are taking to the going to the power bi so it is not going to dictate any new relationship with that it is it will take whatever relationship was already there and exactly in the same way it will be moving to the power bi next one is update or delete relationship with refreshing data so it updates or delete relationship when refreshing data this option is unselected by default actually so it will be unselected if you, are, if you select it power bi checks for changes in data source relationship and your data is refreshed so when you refresh the data this is checked and the new table is not having certain table or certain relationship that will get up if it is unchecked it will be already usually that won't happen so rarely only that will happen so that's why they have unchecked it so now these two tables are having one relationship okay when you refresh it if you don't have this table only this table you are having so if you are selecting this here also the model will get updated with respect to the new table when you refresh it now the third one is auto detected new relationship after data is here so there are certain times when 
mainly in excel or in csvs i have seen there are certain times when the relationships won't get dictated after loading the first time for example now if you are taking this data this excel work i am going to take and so i am going to take this excel sheet and here we have four sheets and we are not going to transform it we are just directly going for load so when we are going to check the model of this data actually we are having four tables and this region table is having an index and the sales details is having region index region id so since both the name is not similar we didn't give the relation automatically so according to this relationship option here you are selecting this and here if it is on the, in the same name and right now if you go to transform data if you give the name as region id and then you close and apply automatically it will detect but at the same time if you are not selecting this and when you close and apply from the transformation option this will look the same so for that we can now if you want to you can drag and you can drop and you can give the relationship or you can manage the relationship but we can see how it is automatically detecting you can go to transform data and in the region table i am going to rename this as region id so now if you close and apply power bi will be automatically so now if you manage go and check the manage relationship and you now if you see now the both the region table region id and sales details region id are similar name but now if you go and auto detect yeah they have it has found one new relationship and it is showing that sales details region id and region region id it has already auto detected now just going to relate it both together you can select it and you can close it and now it will be giving the relations and the cardinality everything in that itself it will find out and it will do it and the flow also it will do it in the similar way so this all things happens if this is checked if it is not checked, it won't happen you have to do it everything manually now the next option is time intelligence and of course if you are a power bi developer definitely time intelligence you will be knowing it more so if you are selecting this you will be getting a table and you will be having a almost like a virtual table inside the table for date columns wherever date column is there you will be getting a virtual table like this if you are now you are having order date now if you have shipment date same will be for the shipment date of until and under so you are going to relate this calendar table. when you relate it with the calendar table of course all these things will change and only the calendar table will be active for time intelligence so one good thing in this is all the time intelligence reporting based can be done in this model or through this table this column so instead of having an order date like this we are having options to get date hierarchy the year quarter month so if you are if you are not selecting this you will be getting a table like this and with this if you want to get the year you need to create a column and you need to format the year from here or you need to split the, the split the year from here from this column the same way to get the quarter the to get the month everything or it will be difficult to select the hierarchies also but at the same time if you are selecting this and if you are getting a almost like a similar sub table like this for the date you will be able to most of the time intelligence functions based upon this when for ytds you can select the date with respect to the day month or quarter if you are having a column like this at the same time for this table we won't be able to you have to do like dates ytd and you have to give this order date here you can give this order date dot month or dot day or dot quarter or dot whichever you need x for that specific hierarchy you can select it and you can give it so basically for the performance this will take on performance because this will be the performance will be more good if you are using this kind of date and uh, those kind of things are there but still you can be, you can use time intelligence functions more accurately you are having a date hierarchy or time intelligence if you are selecting this auto date time time intelligence in data load so the no, next one will be background data so the background data what it does is it allows data produced to download in the background itself so by default when power query imports the data it catches up almost to 100 row 1000 rows of purview data for each query you can see when you check the power query you will be getting the top 1000 rows so that preview data used to help us to present you with some quick preview of source data and the transformation result whatever transformations we are doing we will be able to see the result of the transformation based upon these top rows but however when you if your power bi if your power bi file contains many queries so retrieving and storing preview data can extend the time it takes to complete every refresh 
so it will take time complete a refresh so enabling background refresh can result in preview data becoming out of date if it occurs the power query will notify you with the following one so so you can see this kind of warning when you select a file after some days so if you are have some excel files and if it is not refreshed properly and if you are using it continuously or if you are not using it continuously for some day so after one week and all if you use that data mostly it will be not after one week even after one or two days it will be asking you whether you need to refresh it or not. so that is because the investor want to update the preview catch in the background because it wanted to it is always having it will be always storing all these catch in a separate always not in the power bi data stuff so that's why it will be always asking you next time whether it is whether it is needed to update the preview or whether it is needed not to if you don't select this okay it won't check for updates or if it won't check for any refresh but if you are selecting this it will be checking for background so when these things happens when you take the file to the transformation so when you get the data or if you transform when you use the data for transformation this kind of options this kind of message will so next one is parallel loading of tables it enables parallel loading of tables so it executes and loads multiple queries in parallel this will reduce the time loading multiple table but it degrades server performance this definitely everybody will be seeing but okay all these all the tables will be processing parallelly but when sometimes when it comes to refresh okay, it will take more time if you are having very huge data so at that time if you don't enable this it will take it one at a time but still there are times when you need to there are times when you need to do it in certain other ways that okay, you might not be able to use the desk or be a desktop but you need you will go to the power service and you need to create the data flow and do it because if it is a huge data set and if you are publishing the data set in the power bi service and at that time if you refresh the data so it will be refreshing like this everything will be if you are selecting this everything will be doing it parallelly in the desktop if you this option won't be won't work that much in power bi service so there also it will try to do it parallel but what happens the performance will be very slow so at that time we used to leave this that leave this desktop obi and it is better to go to the power bi service and start the data flow so the next one and the last one is the q and a so what happens when q and a feature is power bi when it is enabled it will create an in the index build it will build quickly the data whatever is there in this data set so suppose if you are having data in the data set so it will the index will build all the columns and the tables and sort and the index will be it will be taken and it will be built in that index and with respect to those all the columns and all the data whenever you even if you double click here just you can see okay when you double click here it is creating the index and it is getting all the data into the index and now it is showing okay you want to on the regions so that is fine and you will be getting with respect to that it will be showing the regions it is counting the rows of all the region of the rows in the region table so it all happens if you are selecting here if you are not selecting here and if you double for q and a a error message kind of this will be shown and it will be asked turn on this q and a so if you are getting this error message that is because you have not selected this event and if you select the share with the synonyms with everyone in your session synonyms you can create by going to this model and here you can select the data which all data you need and you can create the synonyms especially for those data product name they have given product name product and if you take like a row or row name so this all things became synonyms and if you if you want to share that names also with your organizational circle you can you can select this and you can select okay so this is all about data load under this option and settings and hope this will be giving give you an idea especially for q and o relationships and type this detection these are all the main important things here in this so hope this will help you and this will give an insight on the settings and the options in power bi have a nice day